is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Thursday, October 15th, 2020, season 16, episode number 45. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We are live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Uh, we're talking Cowboys football with you guys for 45 minutes. We'll be joined here momentarily by Bucky Brooks, as he does on every Thursday. He's going to talk to us about the opposing team's defense, in this case, the Arizona Cardinals against the Cowboys offense. Uh, but before we get to that, <clears throat> I did want to catch up a little bit on some news that came out this morning during Coach McCarthy's press conference. He talked about Leighton Vanderish. Nick, catch us up on what he had to say about him. Well, he says he's going to practice in full, expects him to practice in full today. That's big, you know, because, I mean, you're going to start doing that on on Thursday of, of a week like this, which is really Wednesday uh, in their practice schedule, then, you know, he, he should be ready to go, uh, I would think, I would assume, be ready to go uh, for, for Monday night's game against the Cardinals. So I'm still a little bit skeptical of – of that because it sounds you know if it was a broken clavicle that just doesn't seem like that's a that one that it heals this quickly but hey, maybe his does they know more than me when it comes to anything but <laughs> particularly you know medical stuff you're selling yourself short Nick I'm not hey, a doctor I'm I gonna I'm gonna take you guys back uh, Amber and Dave I'm gonna take you guys back to prior to the season to the studio no 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 okay. prior to the season and at the time I I'll speak for myself I thought this linebacking core was going to be one of the strengths of this team. Um, then Leighton goes out. Sean never actually gets there to where he can play. If Leighton comes back this week, and I'll, I'll even say if he comes back this week or next week, if you uh, take me back to what your thoughts are, were of what you thought of this linebacker position before, and do you think that's still what they can be at this point after what you've seen so far from Jalen and what you expect from uh, Leighton coming back? Let's start first with you, Amber. I remember talking about just wanting to add some depth uh, at the position, regardless of, of having the talents of, of what you thought you had, Sean Lee, Layton, and then Jalen. But um, I, I remember that the Cowboys had other bigger priorities and necessities. So it kind of got overlooked. And then you start adding linebackers. Then you see the potential of uh, an undrafted guy like Francis Bernard. And then you start feeling good. You're like, OK, we, we got some guys here. and then that happens and with Leighton coming back it's great it's great to hear that he's working his way through it but at the same time even when he makes it to a game day I, I'm still super super hesitant because it makes me wonder how long it's going to take him for his body mentally not just physically but mentally how long is it going to take him mentally to kind of go back to feeling himself like he, he used to be and not being hesitant of making plays because I've seen it in guys, I've said this before, I see it when guys um, have an injury and then they get back on the field and you kind of you can tell that they, they create a certain hesitation and, and that's just natural. It's just something that usually takes a, a couple of weeks for you to break through that. But uh, I am still concerned about the linebacker position. Dave. Yeah, no, AG, I think that was really well said because the harsh reality is that we're pretty long way removed from when he played at an all-pro level as a rookie. I mean, two, two years ago, he missed half of last season and he struggled at times. A lot, a lot of that was because he was playing through injury, but it is what it is. And, and now he's missed, you know, four and a half of the five games this season. And who, who can say how he would have looked that he got more comfortable, but like it's worth pointing out that he was out on the field in that first quarter against the Rams when the Cowboys were getting run all over and all out of sorts with the way that the Rams were misdirecting them. So uh, I'm optimistic that he can come back and get his feet underneath him and definitely, I mean, they'll be better if he's out there, but that could be a bit of a transition because like I said, it's it's been a long time since he's been able to regularly get snaps to the point where 
he was playing at the high level that, that we got used to when he was a rookie. Nick, expectations for the linebacker crew before the season began as far and, and to where they are now? I thought they were the best linebacking uh, linebacker crew in the NFL. I thought they, they had the potential to be that. And I think that right now, you know, like in the first four or five games, they've kind of been uh, the flip side of that, you would say. Um, so that's a nice way to say they're probably one of the worst in the in the league. Um but I don't. I just. I think that that Leighton will help them if he comes back and, and plays like the Leighton that we've seen. Um, but I, you know, Sean Lee as well. I mean, you hope that they come back and, and get some depth. I think Joe Thomas is just a good, solid player. I think that's kind of what he is. He's he, he's good. He hits hard, and he and he'll he'll do whatever you ask. But I don't. I don't think he's he's special, you know, in, in any way. But that's okay. That's okay. I mean, because as your fourth linebacker, that's exactly what you need. But he's had to play a lot more. I just think that, you know, like a lot of positions, they've been banged up um, twice, you know, just like an offensive tackle, cornerback, uh, you know, tied in, not really tied in, but I'm just saying, you know, they've been hit multiple ways and it really affects them. All right. We uh, now have uh, Bucky Brooks on the line joining us uh, live from uh, – he is with NFL Network. Bucky, welcome to the show. Uh, we're ready to jump in and talk a little bit of Arizona defense versus Cowboys offense, and we'll start where we normally start. Talk to me about the strengths and the weaknesses of this Arizona defense. Well, obviously they've been impacted by the loss of Chandler Jones. Losing Chandler Jones, who is a guy who, in my estimation, should have been defensive player of the year in terms of the way that he dominates off the edge. He um, is no longer there. So now what you're going to see is the strength of this team would be their versatility and their multiplicity under Vance Joseph. Vance Joseph wants to bring players from all over the field. He wants to incorporate everybody into the rust package. So you have to keep your eye on three guys. Patrick Peterson as the number one corner, cover corner, he's going to take the best guy. Buda Baker, who's a do-it-all safety, who can come off the edge and play in the slot. And then Devondre Campbell, the second-level linebacker that he got from Atlanta. He is a explosive sideline-to-sideline menace. He does a great job of making plays happen. And because they dial up pressure in any and all situations, you have to keep your eyes on those guys because at any point they can be involved in a disruptive play. Bucky, this, this question is specific to the Cowboys offense. Uh, I'm not trying to blame all the turnovers on Dak by any means, but um, when you have a major change at a position like the quarterback with having Andy Dalton going in there, are you expecting this offense to be able to limit their turnovers? Yeah, some, some of the turnovers will be limited because I would think the offense now – reprioritizes itself and it has to run through Zeke. Doesn't mean that they're going to run the ball 50 times with Zeke Elliott, but I think he has to be first and foremost in the minds of Kellen Moore when it comes to how they want to go about their game plan. Also, I would think that Mike McCarthy has pulled Kellen Moore to the side. Without Dak Prescott, it now becomes more important than ever for the Cowboys to play complimentary ball. And so that means Mike McCarthy has to talk to Kellen Moore about, hey, you got to insert some more runs in because time of possession is really critical because I don't know if our defense can get enough stops for us to play in a shootout with our backup quarterback. And so the turnovers have to be a, a major concern. You have to make sure that you're mindful of those. But I think some of that will be curbed by the way the play calling could change um, with Andy Dalton at quarterback. Yeah, and interesting to note there, uh, Coach McCarthy said this morning in his press conference that A, number one on his list of priorities of things they have to fix and areas that they really should be uh, be blamed about is the turnover ratio and trying to fix that. And he believes that they got some answers to be able to fix that. Go ahead with your question, uh, Nick. You know, I was looking at, at Arizona. It sounds like their their defense uh, starts off the game great. Nobody's, you know, took the ball, drove down, and scored a touchdown to begin the game. The Cowboys, of course, have struggled there uh, as well. What, what do you kind of assess that to when you're looking at the Cardinals' defense when they come out? Is it preparation during the week, coaching? You know, for, for them to come out and, and stop teams in the first drive or two. You never know. Because they've been so um, dynamic with their rush package, they can bring pressure from a bunch of different angles out of a bunch of different personnel packages. Um, it takes a while for an offensive coordinator and a quarterback to adjust to how they're bringing pressure. They do a great job early in the game setting the tone with some very pressures, and then they settle into their game plan. I think what that does is because you're uncertain, you're a little more cautious, 
taking on that kind of approach. You're trying to sort it out. And what you don't want to do early is give them a turnover, give them a splash play, give them something that changes the momentum. So most teams have started out slow as they're trying to figure them out. And that plays in to their advantage because not only defensively are they crazy aggressive, but offensively they also put their foot to the gas and try and really play from ahead from the beginning of the game. So, but I mean, Bucky, this is what you're just talking about, but just for clarity's sake, I mean, I, I agree with you that Chandler Jones is drastically underrated, but he only had one sack for this defense before he got hurt and they have 14 on the year. So, is there a guy that they are relying on to help them generate that pressure or are they blitzing that much that that many different guys are getting home? I mean, if you're trying to account for the way that they rush the passer, where do you think the Cowboys should start? <laughs> Man, this is going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for Andy Dalton in the offensive line because they bring it from everywhere. And because they're doing it by committee, uh, particularly with Chandler Jones out, it makes it hard. Last week we saw Dennis Gardeck have two sacks against the Jets. He's an undrafted free agent who had been in the rotation, but he wasn't a prominent figure. Um, they bring it from everywhere. And because they bring it from everywhere, what they do is they create one-on-one -on -one matchups along the line. A lot of times when you bring five and six, you're trying to isolate one of your players on a particular offensive lineman or the back. And that is what they do. They bring pressure so one of those guys has to hold up in protection and more times than not, they crumble under the weight of the pressure and so they're going to bring pressure they're going to dial it up and because the Cowboys have struggled with pressure in the past particularly go back to the Atlanta game you saw how it took them a while to settle in I would expect them to really come after them early to see if they can create some negative plays and some turnovers because that has been the part of the game that has plagued Dallas early in the game there have been a couple giveaways so you're going to see if Vance Joseph can dial up some things to create those turnovers very very early we're joined by Bucky Brooks of NFL Network. Bucky, uh, right now the Arizona defense is ranked fifth in points allowed, which obviously looks really good for them. However, they've played some of the worst offenses in the league. How much do you handicap where they are as far as the points that they've allowed based upon their opponents? Or do you think this defense really is a very stout defense that, that really is a hard to score on? I mean, they haven't played anybody like the Cowboys. Like the Cowboys offense is, presents a unique challenge. You have three legitimate wide receivers that can take over the game at any point. You have a stud running back that can get it done. And now you have a veteran quarterback who, when protected, is as good as they come. And so we will see how good the Cardinals are. But they believe in really throwing a lot at you. And if you're not on your P's and Q's, it can be overwhelming. And so this will be a game where Andy Dalton making his first start for the Cowboys. He has to be able to sort it out. He able to figure out where the pressure is coming from and Kellen Moore has to help them I would think and I know there's been kind of a, a sore spot for Cowboys fans you're going to see a lot of screens early because you need to run the screens early to get a fit to see if you can slow down this pass or slow down this bricks this blitz package and really help Andy Dalton get comfortable so I know people hate it but I think you'll see three or four screens really really early in the game to see if they can slow this down but he, you, you mentioned creating the balance in the offense between the, the running game and the passing game. And, and after seeing what they were able to do last week, where they were able to get somewhat a better balance there, how, how likely, when you're going against this defense from Arizona, how likely are the Cowboys to kind of carry that over and be productive and make that balance work? Well, I think the balance can work, and I think they may flip the script. I think you may see Andy Dalton throw more than anticipated in the first quarter because everyone is going to think, hey, you don't have your starting quarterback. They're going to give the ball to Zeke Elliott. And so I would think that the Cowboys will counter that by throwing it a little more early in the game, seeing if they can back them up, get them out the box before they get it to Zeke. But I think it's really important to look at the pitch count with Andy Dalton. If Andy Dalton is 30 throws or fewer, I think this is kind of the approach that the Dallas Cowboys want to have. You don't want Andy Dalton to fall into the trap that Dak Prescott was thrust in and that is throwing the ball 40, 45, 50 times. That is not the way to win um, with your backup quarterback starting. You know, I, th I think like – Every week we just we hear about the other team, and that's what that's what we do. That's what you do, you know, the scouting report. And it just looks like you're about to play the AFC Pro Bowl team. The way we talk about it, you know, it's like, well, they've got Hopkins and Kyler Murray and all the blitz off the edge and all that. But, like, why are they getting beat? Like, are they – they look average. They seem like they're average, but are we making them out to be, like, better than that? I mean, what, what – what, I get it. The Cowboys are below average, so this is going to be a tough matchup. But I'm just saying – 
Well, they can't be that great, right? I mean, how, how do you beat the Cardinals? Well, I mean, the Cardinals, the Cardinals are pretty good. So early in the year, they went on the road and they knocked off the San Francisco 49ers. Part of that is familiarity from uh, playing within the division. The other part of it is their quarterback is really good. Their quarterback is um, a unique playmaker. Um, I will put him in the category that he's Pat Mahomes light in terms of his playing style. Um, he's able to escape and make things happen. DeAndre Hopkins is playing like the best wide receiver in football. Cliff Kingsbury has made a concerted effort to put the ball in his hands, and they're playing like a video game. My player is better than your player. I'm going to give it to my player more than your player, and we're going to win because of that. The team that has success, the Detroit Lions had the most success against them. They played a zone. They kept the ball in front. They dared they dared Callum Murray to play dink and dunk ball, and he wasn't able to consistently do it, and he had more turnovers. But he has shown that he can carve you up because the Jets tried to do some of that stuff in zone or whatever, and he threw for 380 yards. Um, they're good because the quarterback is good, and that's the story of the National Football League. When you have a good quarterback, your team is typically good. That's why they're so difficult to deal with. All right, so you're going to be surprised that I'm bringing up a draft prospect, Bucky, but there might not have been a more beloved player in this draft, at least defensively, than Isaiah Simmons. Uh, I think a lot of people were shocked that he lasted as long as he did, which was even, I mean, he, he was taken eighth overall, and that still surprised people. Uh, but he's not really playing. He's getting like 20% of the snaps, uh, and I'm just curious from what you've seen why that is, because it, it certainly seemed in the spring like he was going to be looked at as an instant impact kind of guy. So here's the thing, Dave, when, when it comes to the evaluation process, particularly for us on the outside, we love all the bells and whistles, and the more that you can do when he plays safety and corner and slot and linebacker, and he can do so many different things. The challenge is when you get him on your team, what room does he go to as a position player? Is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? Can he settle into one spot, learn one spot before you put more on him? What has happened with Isaiah Simmons? He's kind of a, a jack of all trades, a master of none. And so he he hasn't really majored in anything. And so because he hasn't majored in anything, the Cardinals are looking and trying to figure out, I can't remove Buda Baker because he's a Pro Bowl player to put him at safety. I can't remove De Devondre Campbell because Devondre Campbell is pretty good. Jordan Hicks has been the steady force in the middle. And the complimentary safety has also been good. So he's a man without a, a designated spot right now. And so it, it can be tough when you have a lot of talent, but the coaches and the front offices aren't on the same page in terms of how we're going to use them. In theory, the plan is great to have a guy that's a Swiss Army knife. It's a lot harder to execute when you get to playing games and you're trying to figure out how to maximize all the personnel outside of Isaiah Simmons. We're talking to Bucky Brooks of NFL Network. Bucky. Uh, they are also giving up a significant number of rush yards, uh, they, including 168 yards they gave up on the ground to Carolina, and that was without uh, Christian McCaffrey, who is out injured right now. So what is the issue with their run defense, and is it something that the Cowboys could possibly, could possibly exploit? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, when you blitz and blitz the way that they play, like they are, I mean, without being, they are a finesseful defense. They want to play finesse because they want to run around, run around blocks and get to the quarterback. So everyone is focused on hunting the quarterback and they don't really want to take on blocks at the point of attack. I think the recipe for most things in this league is teams that can run the ball and can hit you in the face. It, it solves a lot of problems. And when you look at the tape and you see the Carolina Panthers run for that amount of yards with Mike Davis, um, you see other teams have success running the ball it's not that hard you got to run the ball you need to run the ball because you can control it and at this time when you have analytics people telling you you need to throw it every down football is still a physical game you got to run the ball you got to test their wheels you got to see if they can handle the pressure of getting hit in the face and I think for the Cowboys it is really important to run the ball with Zeke particularly with the offensive line being one that is better going forward than retreating and pass protection. And real quick before we let you go, you mentioned earlier Patrick Peterson was a guy to keep an eye on. He's a guy that can match up and take away your top receiver. If you're looking at the Dallas Cowboys, which of those three guys becomes that top receiver that you take away if you're Patrick Peterson or if you're the Arizona Cardinals matching Patrick Peterson up with someone? Oh, well, I think you still have to take away Amari Cooper. Like it's, it's all fun and games that C.D. Lamb has had big moments. Michael Gallup has made some plays. 
But we have seen when you leave Amari Cooper unchecked, Amari Cooper will go for 200 yards. They cannot have that. So I think even though Amari Cooper's numbers are down and other guys are feasting, I think defensive coordinators around the league understand that it starts with him in the passing game. You have to take him away and make them go to the other weapons and hope that your other players can contain C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup. But you cannot let Amari Cooper have his way because if he gets going, then it really makes it difficult for everybody else to slow down the other weapons that the Cowboys have at their disposal. All right, Bucky, man, we appreciate you joining us. We uh, will have you back next week. Real quick, tell us who's going to win this game. What, what 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 do you expect to see on Monday night? You know, I think the complimentary factor, I think in, in saying this, and I love Dak Prescott, I think this could help the Cowboys get back to the formula that they'll need to win a ton of games. I think playing complimentary ball, putting the pressure on Mike Nolan and John Fossil to fix their problems is going to be critical. I think the Cowboys win. I think they win at home because it, they, they, they have it. They understand what is ahead of them. They need to win. I think that must win gives them the urgency to win by about seven. All right. Thank you. We will be back. We'll have you next week. Uh, talk a little bit more about uh, our next upcoming opponent after we get through that Monday night game. Uh, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more uh, about the Cowboys versus the Cardinals. We're going to come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears. Okay. Let's play. Cream soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. It's funny, as we travel places, often we find the places we want to travel aren't really places at all. They're people. They're grandparents, moms, old friends, and new nephews. That's why at American Airlines, we've been using enhanced cleaning measures so you can feel confident every step until you get to them. So as always, our people can't wait to take you to yours. American Airlines, you are why we fly. Back to the break. Help your fellow Cowboy fans in their fight against cancer by purchasing Dallas Cowboys Crucial Catch gear. Support a great cause. Look good doing it. Visit your local Dallas Cowboys Pro Shop or shop.dallascowboys.com. Welcome back to the second segment of the break live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Let's uh, let's dive in a little deeper on the Cowboys versus the Cardinals, particularly the Cowboys offense versus the Cardinals defense. And I wanted to start first talking about this uh, wide receiver core. Um, CeeDee Lamb obviously has been everything the Cowboys expected him to be, probably a little more even. Uh, this last game, he was uh, he had eight receptions on 11 targets, had 124 yards. The second time this year, he's going over 100 yards. He was averaging 15.5 per reception, as long being 26 yards. Um, but it, all that being said, he only played about 55% of the offensive snaps. That's 36 out of 66. Now, when you compare that to the other receivers, Cooper at 64%, uh, he did 42 of the 66. Gallup was the one that played the vast majority of the game, 97% of the offensive snaps, 64 of 66 offensive snaps. My first question for you guys is, should C.D. Lamb be playing more for this team based upon the production that he's providing? Let's start first with you, Nick. Well, I, I don't 
I don't know about that, honestly, because uh, what he's doing is amazing because wide, wide receivers are one of those positions that seemingly takes the, the – it's, it's the toughest for them to jump in and really have success early. Um, it's just there's so much that, that, that you have to learn and all that. So what he's done has been amazing. I think how they're doing it is, is good, and, and, and I'll point this out. Of all the plays he made in the game, he pro- the biggest play he made, in my opinion, was an eight-yard catch, maybe or ten yard on first. On it was Dalton's first pass. I mean, the, everybody's you know just not sure what's even going on here. Dak's getting wheeled out. Everyone's crying, and it's third down, and he makes an, a diving eight-yard catch for a first down. And then the next play, the Cowboys score a touchdown. That was a very, very great catch, and, and he had to change his body. So he's doing everything. I, I think the Cowboys are handling it just fine though honestly amber i i agree with nick i like the way that they they've been managing the game especially when you're talking about a, a group of wide receivers that don't have a drastic uh, they're not drastically better or worse than the other they're pretty balanced there so i'm not mad about it i like the balance that they're created and i think that they're really making it seem like a very smooth transition for for a guy like CeeDee Lamb who you know it's not always easy for a rookie to come in this league so I I, I like what they're doing right now with that. Dave? Yeah Lamb's not really my issue I mean for better or for worse the the Cowboys are not that team that's going to run 11 personnel 80 percent of the time they like to use their tight ends even with Blake Jarwin hurt honestly with the problems with the offensive tackles I don't even begrudge them that like it's probably a good idea to have those guys in helping what I think is curious is uh, Amari Cooper's snap counts yeah you said it was 63 this past weekend everybody noticed there were there were full possessions where it was Gallup Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown and those two guys are playing great don't get me wrong I'm I'm all in favor of them getting snaps but it is a little weird because I agree with Bucky Amari Cooper, for my money, is the most down-after-down important receiver. I mean, people scoff at the possession receiver um, tag, but, like, this is a guy who can catch 10 balls in a game and just keep the chains moving. And we know he can take over games downfield if the defense lets him, too. But for my money, nobody's more important to just catching 8, 9, 10, 11 passes, many of which keep the chains moving, than Amari Cooper. So... Mike McCarthy makes it sound like it's a load management thing, but at the same time, like he's not really on the injury report, so that's that's very curious to me. And I'm I'm gonna have a close eye on his snap count because I think it's weird that he would only get 63% of the snaps. Amber, how much do you read into the fact that he's only getting 64% and Gallup's getting 97%? You know, that, that, that's something that I did notice last game, and it's like it, it keeps kind of somewhat decreasing a little bit. And because he's not in the injury report, because I was going to say, okay, well, we know he's battled with a foot injury for the longest time, but that's not showing up on the injury report. And then at the same time, I'm like, okay, I know he's not necessarily being a very consistent guy, but at the same time, well, they've been playing home games right now, and his issue has always been on the road. So maybe that's not the issue either. So I don't know if, if maybe it's something that they're noticing more during the week rather than on game day, just practice-wise. Uh, but other than that, there's nothing I can necessarily pinpoint because they we don't get to see the whole practice. So maybe I'm just going to think that it's based on how these guys are performing during the week. Nick? You know, I'm just looking at the overall snap count of the of the season. And, yeah, 93 for Gallup and 81 for, for Cooper. Um, you know, the, the, what's surprising to me is the 100% of the snaps against Cleveland uh, for, for Michael Gallup. That, that's obviously um, the position that he's playing on the field. And I, I think that Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown – have come in and especially playing some of the slot stuff uh, has really, you know, probably taken CD off the field at, at some times. But, you know, it doesn't seem like there's anybody that that's a big, you know, field stretcher like like Gallup. So I, I think, you know, I, you, you want them to all kind of complement each other a little bit more. Um, and, and I think that that will happen. I don't think this is a huge problem. I mean, this isn't really where their problems are, you know. I mean, I know what you're saying, but I just think that this is this is okay. 
It's the other side of the ball that you know. Yeah, and quite frankly, I, again, I wasn't. I was just pointing it out to yeah, ask the question. I don't think it's actually surprising. a problem for the Cowboys because they're getting the most production out of them. And and I, I have always been a proponent of the idea of using the data that's available to you to do whatever you need to do to protect your players. And and if they're if they're rationale that they're giving, which it sounds like this is what it is, that they're trying to manage his workload so that he doesn't end up on the injury report and he doesn't end up missing yeah. games, which we know have been problems for him in the past, then I'm all for it. Especially, again, if you're getting the production you need both out of him and also out of uh, out of C.D. Lamb and then Michael Gallup as well. Yeah, I mean, Bucky said his numbers are down. He took the words right out of my mouth. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Dave. It- no, that, yeah, that, that's exactly what I wanted to say. Sorry, Nick. It's just like, I don't necessarily think it's a problem. I just think it's interesting. Mm-hmm. And we all know you don't have to be on the injury report to be having some things that are bothering you. So, you know, if, if they think this is going to help Amari Cooper play the best 16 games possible, I'm fine with that. I just think it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is is that if, if Cooper does what he's done and just on pace, I mean, I think he'll set the Cowboys' single-season record for catches. I mean, so his numbers, you know, he's averaging 10.9. You would expect a little bit more. He does have the longest catch of the season but uh, for the Cowboys, but, I mean, he's on pace to get 125 or something catches. That's I, I think that's the record. Uh, that would be a Cowboys record at least. So, you know, the, the fact that you got other guys that are kind of stretching the field a little bit, if, if that's a possession receiver, that's fine. I mean, Michael Thomas is a possession receiver, and I'll take mm-hmm. him all day long. So that's exactly right. And if he's getting, like you said, if he's getting the production, he's getting even with less snaps. Yeah, that means you're doing something right. Michael, you want to get maximum maximum. Michael Irvin was a yeah. possession receiver. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to take our final break. When we come back, I do want to talk about Ezekiel Elliott and this and this run offense uh, and how it all is 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 being factored in when you look at what's happening with the Cowboys' offensive line and particularly coming up against a team now in the Arizona Cardinals who, as Bucky told us, has some issues at times defending against the run. We'll do that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Back to the break. There's really only way one way to read this, so I'm just gonna here goes. Monster Jam returns to AT&T Stadium October 24th and 25th. This adrenaline-charged family entertainment features some of the most famous trucks in the world with world-class drivers who push these perfectly engineered vehicles to their limits in freestyle, two-wheel skills, and racing competitions. Get your tickets now at SeatGeek.com. Woo! <laughs> Monster Jam. Nice. Monster Jam. That was nice. very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Sunday, I hope Chris was, Sunday, Sunday. Right. I hope I hope Chris was recording that. They may actually want to use that like in other <laughs> venues. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's a good read right there, Nick. All Thank right. you. 
Uh, we may have found a new job for you. Um, all right, so let's jump back in. I wanted to talk about Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, this last game, he had 19 runs for 91 yards, two touchdowns, 4.8 average. Um, they look like they're in parts of games. It reminded me of of what we saw from Jason Garrett's offense early when he became the head coach with the Cowboys. They'd have these games where things were seemingly kind of a little shaky, and they would just have a, a, a run drive. Like, literally, they would just run, 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 run. And they're getting three or four yards every run and just picking up first downs and keep running and keep running it. And that's what it felt like, and that's the kind of commitment to the run I don't think we'd seen around here in, in some time. That all being said, how do you assess Zeke's play this last game? Do you think he was getting as much as he could possibly get out of those runs? Or do you think it was? Uh, you know, do you think that maybe there was some room for improvement on Zeke's part with regards to how they were running the ball on Sunday? Let's start first with you, Dave. I mean, you know, we can go back to the the argument of you know the explosiveness, and I think you know Zeke's only run of more than 15 yards this season was the one that he fumbled against Cleveland, but. I've just I've been so impressed by his physicality and and the way that you know it it tip and and this wasn't wasn't always the case last year but this year it really seems like it takes two or three tacklers to stop him um, whereas last year there were times where it almost felt like he was looking for contact so he could go down maybe that's a mad you know matter of not being properly conditioned but he seems like he's in great condition because. Uh, even if the runs aren't long, they're punishing and, and they're hard to stop. So I've been really impressed by his physicality um, and, and his finish, I guess you could say. Uh, and, and they're going to need that to, to, help, to help their offense without Dak, if I had to guess. Amber. Maybe my memory is completely serving me wrong, but I see it completely opposite from what Dave just said. I feel okay. like... Let's go. <laughs> I just feel like previous years, and, and again, because the Cowboys have had to rely more on the running game and on Zeke based on, you know, Dak wasn't playing like, like he was playing this year in previous years. So the passing game looked completely different in that aspect. Um, I feel like Zeke has always been that guy who's able to, to – push for those extra yards and just get those extra dirty yards because he's so bold. he's so strong he's so strong to push to push off defenders but this year he just doesn't seem like the Zeke that we we are used to seeing in, in my perspective he's still doing okay he's still doing fine uh as far as just him personally and, and, and like physically but at the same time the running game just hasn't been as productive as I feel like we're used to seeing. Nick, I mean, what's the phrase like? Hold my beer. Is that what <laughs> I mean? Y y you don't think he's as physical? And and, and I don't know. I mean, I kind of agree with both of them. But I know this: against the Cardinals, this guy's going to run his ass off. Like he is going to absolutely. He's going to do everything he can possibly do. He is going to try to run over, jump over people. He, you're going now. I hope he hangs on to the ball because sometimes when you're focused on some of that other stuff. But he is going to straight run over people. And if and if I heard Bucky say this is kind of a finesse defense, he's going to attack them. He's going to play pissed off football because his his dude, his brother, is not there. He's going to be on the sideline maybe or, or whatever, but he's not there handing the ball off to him. And you watch the emotion that, that Zeke runs with this week. I think he's going to play probably one of his best games. Yeah, and that's where I, I mean, was... we saw it in that touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Purcell saw it with it. He was the one holding the camera. I was like, he almost got taken out there. <laughs> he was, he was intense. Yeah, uh, I mean that was where I was going to go next, though. When you think about this this defense that they're going to play, and Bucky said it that that essentially their objective is get to the quarterback. Which means when you have defenses like that that are ultra aggressive and blitzing and trying to get to the quarterback, they do create these holes. Mm -hmm. Naturally, create these holes. How much do you think the Cowboys are in a position to take advantage of that, though? Because they do have these guys that we've talked about over and over again. Not Knight, Steele, Biotish, they have a lot of unproven guys playing right now on their offensive line. Are the Cowboys in a position to be able to take advantage of that, or even against the team that may create those opportunities for them? I'm going to start first with you, Amber. You know, it's very difficult for me to, to make an assessment right now because based on the game against the Giants, I... I they seem okay. They made me feel like it was it was okay. It's gonna be okay. They're gonna be able to handle it and get better and just kind of make all those pieces glued together and work as a whole team offensively. But 
then again, I have to stop myself and remember, okay, these were the giants. It, it, so it, it's hard for me to kind of put those two things aside and fully assess that what that's going to mean for the offensive line and their abilities to create holes. I, as far as like the running game specifically, Zeke is the guy that can find a hole anywhere. Like he will look for it. He, he, it it's crazy how skilled he is in that way. But it, it's just very hard standing here today on a Thursday for me to fully tell you what my assessment is at this point. Dave. I'll tell you this. Uh, I mean, yeah, yes, they can take advantage of this team. And I think Bucky's dead on about, you know, screens and trying to take care of their aggressive or, I mean, excuse me, take advantage of their aggressiveness. But the one thing I don't want to see, and maybe, I don't know, maybe me and Bucky butt heads on this, but like, I, I think about Tony Dungy. Uh, if you watch his work on Sunday nights, like there seems to be this, this current of thought that like, in order to protect Andy Dalton, you just need to charge Zeke into a brick wall a hundred times and, and that'll help you win. And I hate that because uh, I think you're actually doing Andy Dalton a disservice by doing that. I mean, if you're running on first and second down regularly and putting yourself in obvious passing situations, that's how you get a backup quarterback murdered behind backup offensive tackles. Uh, I think they need to be unpredictable. They still need to be throwing the ball. Scared money don't make money. Andy Dalton has been to three Pro Bowls. Like, I, you, you, can't, you can't pare this thing down to be so basic that you're just charging Zeke ahead because you think that's going to help you win. So, yes, they can take advantage. Zeke, Zeke should be able to have a nice day at the office. But if they're going to try to play, you know, 1985 football because they don't have Dak, I think they're in for a bad time. Oh, I think they definitely have the the weapons to to do that and, and to offset blitzes because they they've got playmakers in the open field like uh, you know CD and Gallup and, and and Cooper that that can get off the the, the coverage quickly um, and you know so it, Patrick Peterson can't cover everybody you know obviously I mean he can take one guy but I think that you know it'll probably be better for the Cardinals for him to just stay on one side uh, but if he's going to chase someone and you know I, that. That means the other guys are going to have to, to travel those two, uh, those other two spots too. But yeah, I think I think this is going to be a really a chess match because they can blitz all they want to, but Andy Dalton, I mean, Andy Dalton is a more accurate quarterback I think than 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 Dak. I mean, in in, in just those passes like that. Now Dak brings a totally different type of game to the you know, and and I'm not trying to piss off Cowboys Nation by that, but I mean, I think it's it's safe to say that that's not what Dak's best thing is, is an accuracy. Um, he's he's getting there, though. He's getting there, and he, he, he's he been he's been playing great, but I think against the Blitz and things like this, I think Andy Dalton can carve him up if if they can just keep him, you know, blocked just enough. Right, and that's, that's the issue, and that's the question I, I'm going to pose back to you guys is, yeah, I think Andy Dalton, and, and we talked this uh, with Bucky about this uh, yesterday, but he could be a really good quarterback from what Bucky says. He can be a really good quarterback when he has time, when he has, when he's protected well. When you've got two tackles that are inexperienced playing mm-hmm. out there, how 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 convinced are you that they can give him the time he needs in order to in order to carve them up, especially against a team, and we talked about this earlier as well, where you don't have one particular pass rusher that you need to pay attention to so you can double him, chip him, do all those things. This is coming from you a lot of different angles, right. and there's some confusing stuff probably that they're going to throw at the Cowboys. How convinced are you this offensive line can hold up? Dave, I mean, Nick. Well, I'm not really convinced that they that they can. I think you got to get the ball out quickly. Um, but I think that, it, like I said, it's a chess match, though. They're going to be blitzing all – because when you blitz all over the field, um, you better get it blocked up. You know, if Zach Martin gets his guy – then, then you can you can bust a run right up the middle on them. So it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun game because the, the Cardinals. I mean, they do all that trickery stuff because they kind of have to. I, I'm just not convinced that the Cardinals are all that good. I mean, they haven't beaten anyone yet either, and so the Cowboys aren't good either. So this is this is that's why it's a you know what two point line right now. It's it's pretty much a toss up. Dave. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really concerned if, if they're in these obvious situations. Like, I mean, uh, this is football 101, but especially right now, you just can't afford to, uh, I'll, I'll use Jason Garrett's phrase, like be behind schedule. You know, you take in sacks or you're putting yourself into third and eight or third and 10 situations. 
that's not conducive uh, to, to success. And that, you know, you gotta, you're going to have to find ways to offset that. Um, screens is, is obvious, but, yeah, maybe you mix in a draw play. Uh, shoot, I'm the one that said you've got to tweak the offense because Andy's not the same, but you know what they probably wouldn't see coming is a quarterback keeper from Andy Dalton. Not saying you should do it a lot, but these are the types of, uh, you know, misdirections that you can use to take advantage of an aggressive Chill defense. Chill out, Dave. Chill out. You don't <laughs> hey. need any crazy stuff happening again. Scared <laughs> money don't make money. I got a stat. I'm just saying, you got to – oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, I just think this is interesting. This year, Dak Prescott, uh, you know, obviously in the last decade, Cam Newton's got the most rushing touchdowns, 62. Dak this year's got, I think, three. He's passed – Andy Dalton for second place hmm. on touch, on rushing touchdowns by quarterbacks. I didn't know that Andy Dalton was up that high. 22. Wow. If Russell Wilson has 19. This is since 2011. Um, Josh Allen's got 20, so he's coming in fast yeah, here he yeah. um, from the from the Bills. But I mean, you know, he, he, he scores. He's not. He's not a. I mean, it was what we talked about Monday, yeah. right? He's not the the what you consider to be the statue that sits in the pocket. Right. He may not be. You know. Russell Wilson, he may not be, you know, those guys that are just their game. They really can kill you running the ball, but that doesn't mean he can't take opportunities and be able to do something with them. I will just point this out as well, and you noticed it in the last game at the beginning of the game. I think you're going to see even more of it as they go down the line. Cowboys started the game with two bootlegs. Cowboys use quite a bit of screens. Cowboys use up tempo quite a bit to not allow the, the their opponent to be able to substitute. I think all three of those things will be critical, and you will. I expect to see a lot of that from this offense, particularly early in the game, because I think that's how they'll slow down that pass rush. They'll slow down those blitzes just a bit, just enough to make them a little more hesitant in doing it, and then it'll, they'll be able to get into their regular offense. But I think those are some of the things that, that they've already shown they're willing to do in order to help their offensive line out a little bit. All right, we appreciate you joining us. You know what? Go ahead, Amber. I was just going to say the, the one, one thing that I think gives me a little bit of ease um, is – because of Andy Dalton's uh, amount of experience, I feel like he's going to be a guy that will just throw the ball away. If he feels some pressure coming, that like he's not going to be throwing interceptions instantly. He, he has the experience to know, okay, I'm just going to toss this ball and throw it away. Even though, I mean, that doesn't make it any better, really, because you're still not completing a pass. But I think that, that my expectations as far as like, okay, Getting pressure and having to throw balls that could possibly be intercepted are lower than what I would feel like if it was any other quarterback than Andy Dalton. That's a great point. Um, and I think that's going to be really important to, to how successful they are is how well he can do with diagnosing things and then making the smart play quickly. Um, all right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We're back tomorrow. Uh, we'll tell you what we think is going to happen on Monday night for this Monday night game, Cowboys versus Cardinals. So then for Nick Eatman, Dave Helm, and Amber Garcia, I am Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com. Radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!